In part three of lecture three, we will discuss bacchus nar form and parsing. BNF allows us to create classes of characters. In this way, I can tell that zero through nine are all digits, and I can use the word digit to represent the possibility of any digit appearing here. I can do the same thing for letter to signify any letter from A to Z, or to uppercase or lowercase. This simplifies the job of specifying which strings are legal and which are not. Let's look at another example, which is also an expression grammar, and perhaps a little simpler than the earlier example. An expression consists of an expression, a plus sign, and a term, or simply a term. Now the expression on the right-hand side is a simpler expression than the one on the left of the production. Similarly, a term derives a term, a time sign, and a factor, or just a factor. And a factor is an expression in parentheses, or just a number. Given these rules, let's parse the two expressions that you see here. 3 plus 4 plus 5, or 3 plus the sum of 4 plus 5. The presence of the parentheses changes the order in which we evaluate them. And we need a parse tree to show that. In both cases, we have the expression at the top. Expression is a start symbol in this grammar. And they both derive an expression plus a term. But what you have after that is quite different. In the left tree, the left sun, the expression, derives an expression, a plus sign, and a term, and ultimately derives two numbers. The term derives a factor that derives a number. The parse tree on the right is different. Its left sun, the expression simply derives a term, which derives a factor, which derives a number. The right sun, the term, derives an expression in parentheses, and that also ultimately leads to two numbers. The reason that the two trees look different is because our idea of what expressions, terms, and factors are are determined by the order in which we do the operations to calculate a particular result. Parse trees are helpful in analyzing the adherence of a program to its language's syntax. But it is a somewhat wasteful diagram. There are a lot of intermediate symbols that we really don't need once parsing is over. An abstract syntax tree becomes a lot more useful. This shows us what we really want to know, whether we are first adding the first two numbers or first adding the second two numbers. We still need a parse tree in the sense that going through the motions allow us to understand the syntax of the program and evaluate the semantics with that in mind. But it is more helpful to save an abstract syntax tree than a parse tree. Here we see the parse tree as we derive it for 3 plus 4 times 5. On the left, our sub-expression has only one term, and the term on the right has two factors. It lets us see quite plainly that we are multiplying 4 times 5 before doing the addition. Here we see an expression that is a little different. We do the addition first, and then the multiplication. We only have one term in the expression, even though one of its factors is an expression inside parentheses. We can parse that expression as part of the larger expression, and you can see the result here. This slide shows the syntax for an if-else statement. There are seven components, the token if, the token open parenthesis, the non-terminal expression, the token close parenthesis, the non-terminal statement, the token else, and another non-terminal statement. To be correct, the parentheses are each a token themselves. The abstract syntax tree is much simpler. The root of this tree fragment is the non-terminal if statement, and it has three children, the expression that represents the condition, the statement that is executed if the condition is true, and the statement that is executed if the condition is false. BNF is very useful in describing how we assemble the words of a language and its syntax. Extended bacchus nar form, or EBNF, has a few extra meta symbols. The main reason for adding these symbols is so we can remove recursion from the specifications that we write with it, and we can replace them with iteration, which is something most people are more comfortable with. 
EBNF includes two symbols that help us remove recursion. Placing a string of symbols in curly braces tells us that the string can occur zero or more times. Placing a string of symbols in square brackets tells us that it is optional and it will appear either once or not at all. In this example we have the same expression grammar as before but this time we express it in EBNF. An expression is a term followed by zero or more occurrences of a plus sign and a term. A term is a factor followed by zero or more occurrences of a time sign and a factor. Lastly, a factor is an identifier, a constant, or an expression in parentheses. When we start creating a parse tree, there is one question that we need to answer after we derive from the start symbol. Which non-terminal do we do a derivation for next? The most logical answer is to work from one end or the other. If we start with the leftmost non-terminal, we create a left-derived tree. If we start from the rightmost non-terminal, we create a right-derived tree. While the difference may seem trivial, that is not really the case. Left-derived trees are produced by top-down parsing, where we build the tree starting from its root. Right-derived trees are produced by bottom-up parsing, where we assemble tree fragments by joining one to another tree fragment until we end up with an entire tree. While both have advantages, bottom-up parsing is more common because it is easier to automate and it can work with any context-free grammar. Top-down parsing works on many such grammars, but not on all of them.